Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so glad to be with you all here at ABN and the Trinity Channel. And I'm thankful to be on this program this evening with Dr. Bossom and others. And uh, we give God praise for this discipleship project. And uh, I'd like to turn to Dr. Bossom Goreal. And uh, greetings, Dr. Bossom. Welcome. Welcome, Pastor Joseph. Um, greetings to you and praise God for you and those who, does, who don't know you. Pastor Joseph is the chairman of the board of directors and also with us we have Dr. D uh, Dr. Bill Hassler who is vice chairman of the board of directors. Yes. Amen. Greetings brother Bill. Good to see you and uh, I see uh, Dr. Dan over there. Uh, thank you all for letting me join you this evening. And uh, I'm very excited. I was just listening to the last half hour and the discussion. And uh, I have a question for Dr. Bossom. But before I do, uh, Dr. Bill, you mentioned, you know, kind of rhetorically, um, you know, how, how do we keep uh, leaders from basically getting burnt out, getting discouraged? And um, I, I read a quote recently from uh, C.S. Lewis that, uh, I can't give you the exact quote, but essentially he said, I find that the people who think more about heaven are more effective here, and the people who think less about heaven are less effective here. Mm -hmm. And this idea of, of that mind and that heart, uh, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And, you know, I think in this culture today, in the 21st century, it's not quite as easy to be thinking of heaven as maybe it was, say, 400 years ago when death is all around you and your family and everything else. And so uh, I think that might be a key. <laughs> sure, sure. But Dr. Bossom, I want to ask you that there's so much going on at ABN, the Trinity Channel. We're very excited. Uh, I don't know how, but God has strengthened you and the team at ABN and, and Dr. Bill and, and many others to be able to uh, keep up this startling pace of marathons. Uh, my goodness. So uh, tell us a little bit more about the rest of the marathons that you have planned during this year. Uh, I know in the past, pretty much we were talking about apologetic marathons exclusively yes. at ABN. But now uh, I understand discipleship and other subject matters. Could you share with our viewers, brother? Yes, sure. Thank you, Pastor Joseph. I will share with about that, and I would like to ask the the uh, studio director to uh, to prepare a slide because we thank you. Yeah, this one um, here, Pastor Joseph. We have three categories of the marathons, and this year, 2021, um, the our strategic was plan was to do eight uh, marathons. Um, but all eight are under th three categories. Christian Apologetics Leadership and Discipleship Marathon, Apologetics Marathon for Trinity Channel, and the last one, the last category, Praise and Worship Marathon. Well, um, the two already, it has been done, two of them. One, uh, the first Apologetic Marathon for Trinity Channel, and then also we uh, finished the first one of the present worship. But uh, we have two more. And one of these two, I am excited about them, um, about the leadership and discipleship marathon. And praise God. I praise God for Dr. Bill Hustler. He did uh, um, a miracle in this, uh, <laughs> in this preparation. And uh, I, I am so excited. This is the first marathon that we are um, uh, successful more than all the others. He, he, he started everything from planning, designing, preparing, coordinating, uh, you name it, okay, uh, scheduling <laughs> and inviting the, the top 20 good academic speakers from missionary churches, and uh, he, will, he will explain later on. But uh, um, no, if, if we could go back to the first slide, please. So um, the, why we are doing this show now, actually, it's a pre-marathon. When is the marathon? It's going to be April 19th to 23rd. So this is just like 
promo show for announcement to tell people what are what are we going to do what are we going to say in the coming marathon or which is the first christian apologetic leadership and discipleship and then mm -hmm. we have the, another one too we we do have about leadership and apologetics uh, sorry and discipleship the other one will be in november but uh, <clears throat> we did one in apologetics uh, and we have two more, as you see, and praise and worship, we did one uh, in the past few months, and now we have two more. Also, um, uh, in July, we have obviously the second praise and worship, but in July, we have two, another, two other uh, good news. One of them is we're going to celebrate our 16th anniversary. At the same time, in the same time, in the same July, in the same time of that uh, 12 to 16 uh, of July, we're going to launch our fifth channel, which is uh, Hindi channel to India. Mm. Thank you. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Well, you're certainly busy, and uh, I don't want to increase your workload, but uh, I think that you should have at least one more marathon uh, or something to that effect uh, the week of September 11th. Oh, that one! I'm sorry. That one already. It's in the plan. We are, okay. but, but we we don't call that one a marathon. Yeah, there yeah. will be there will be like three four days about uh, what you said. Thank you for reminding. Yeah. Yes, right. The twentieth anniversary, and uh, here in America, we need to remember that definitely. But this is an exciting thing. I thank God for the focus of discipleship. I'll just say before I turn it back over to you all. Um, being a former missionary to Muslims, I used to hear often the importance of discipleship and follow-up. Uh, when I was a missionary, we really saw a little bit of fruit, uh, whether through ABN or through personal witness. It was slow. But as Dr. Bassam and others can attest who've been working with Muslims in the last five years in particular, there's been a, a huge uh, increase in Muslims coming to Christ, and uh, we rejoice. But with all of this taking place, the need for discipleship has uh, has increased exponentially and, and very rapidly, uh, because my understanding is Muslims are coming to Christ in record numbers like they never have before in the 1,400-year history of Islam. So I commend you, Dr. Basum, and thank God for the vice chairman of, uh, of the board, Dr. Bill Hustler and his work, Dr. Dan uh, being willing to help, and, and the others uh, who I've seen on the promotion. Uh, this is wonderful. And by the way, the denomination that I'm associated with, they have a ministry that just goes uh, to places and in Africa in particular because there's plenty of preaching of Christ, there's plenty of the gospel, there's plenty of evangelism, but there's very little sound discipleship, orthodox teaching, building people up in the faith. And so I rejoice in this emphasis, and I thank God for your hard work, brothers. Uh, well, uh, thank you. When I, can, when I hear Dr. Bossom's introduction, and uh, that he he said, you know, they say it's a little bit like perfume. Yeah. You smell it, but you don't swallow it. And um, <laughs> oh, I just I just want to say that. It, really, I, I just I just cherish the context that God has given me throughout the United States and around the world. And uh, so for me, <clears throat> it's a joy to be able to work with guys like Dr. Dan and others that are going to be on this marathon. And uh, with Bossom, Dr. Bossom is going to be there uh, on a regular basis. Brother Joseph, you know that I have enjoyed so much working with you over the years. And uh, I just cherish, I cherish these friendships that God has given me uh, over the years. Uh, I, I do want to go back, you know, as we're talking about discipleship and, and definitely the leadership discipleship uh, slash discipleship uh, marathon is going to focus on discipleship. But one of the things that we mentioned at the beginning of the show tonight was that we also want to talk about leadership gifting. 
And how does the leader fit into this whole thing of making disciples and training those who are going to be the trainers? And so we talk about the importance of uh, the character of the leader. And then we're going to have a show on a Wednesday on the Wednesday night where we're talking about what leadership is and what leadership is not. Uh, it's interesting that Jesus, when he uh, stooped down and he washed the feet of the disciples, he said, I want you to go and do this likewise. Now, out of that has come this idea that, therefore, you really cannot be a strong leader and yet be a follower of Christ. I, I find that inconsistent with Scripture, however. Moses it's, was a very strong leader, and yet he, it says he was the meekest man on the face of the earth. So somehow there was strength, and, and you read some of the stories. You know, the way he confronted those who confronted him, he was a strong leader. But he had a humility about him. And so we're going to talk about some of these misconceptions about Christian leadership, what it is and what it isn't. So I'm excited about that. And, uh, and then on Thursday and Friday nights, we're going to talk about – what is it that a leader does and how does that impact uh, the whole thing of discipleship? For example, uh, leaders plan. And so our, our emphasis is going to be on helping to develop leadership as well as discipleship. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Dan, I, I just want to have Dr. Dan step in here a little bit because uh, – Dan, I know that you focus on that in your whole thing of training pastors and training leaders. You focus on developing the heart of the leader. You talk about the things that, I mean, you've talked about, boy, if the pastor doesn't step up, uh, it's probably not going to happen. And so mm -hmm. I, I want you just to maybe address uh, how you see some of this uh, fleshing out. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be uh, the key um, as you said, is helping uh, leaders with their heart. I like Psalm 78, 72, said, where David shepherded them uh, with integrity of heart and with skillful hands. And Bill, what you alluded to there is those two sides. Yes, we got to have a shepherd's heart. That's being the servant leader. But we also have to have the skilled hands. That's the competency, the leadership skills, the leadership abilities, the ability to bring people around us. And one of the things, uh, particularly on what leaders do that you'll be talking about during this marathon, is you find people that are different than you. You know, Paul talked about apostles and prophets and teachers and shepherds and pastors. And, you know, it's learning, okay, what is the role that God might have me, but how can I surround myself with other people so that the full body is met and we can have the, this culture that builds on that. And so, so yeah, I think, I think when you deal with that and what leaders do and uh, those are things and working on that integrity of heart, if we don't have that integrity of heart, it doesn't matter what we say. It doesn't matter what we do. They will, they will see the heart. You know, I, I said at the beginning of the show, that's why I walked away from God when I was a teenager, because what I saw in scripture and the way I saw the leaders of my church leading were two different things. And at that time, I didn't understand that there was a, you know, Jesus said, you know, there are Pharisees out there. I couldn't figure that out. And so what I did is saying, okay, if the leaders who are supposed to be leading and living this out, if they're not living this out, this doesn't work. And so that's when I rejected God. And so it's really guarding that integrity of heart uh, to have that heart, or it doesn't matter what we say, people are not going to follow. Sure. And previously, um, I, um, we had talked about burnout. And that's one of the things that we want to talk about. And Exodus 18, we'll talk about Exodus 18 with what we call Jethro Gation. Where, <laughs> uh, Moses' his father in law came to him and said, What in the world are you doing, Moses? I stood at the line, those people. 
They waited there and they waited there and they waited there all day. They were angry. What you're doing is not good. Now, I give Moses credit to, li <laughs> to listen to his father-in-law tell him what you're doing is not good. When he said, hey, I'm busting myself to lead these people. Mm. No, but if, you'll, if you'll learn to delegate, then you can stand the strain and these people will go home satisfied. Mm. Well, that's leadership. Well, Dr. Bill, thank you. And, and Dr. Dan, uh, after just hearing you for just a few moments, I'm thinking, boy, uh, I need to watch all of these uh, as a pastor and learn. And as that was in my mind, I turned to Dr. Bossom once again. Dr. Bossom, um, this is going to be all in English, I understand. Correct. So uh, this excellent teaching uh what is the plan for how we're going to disseminate this? Now, this is going to be on our satellite TV live, uh, as well as our internet broadcast and our apps. And then I'm sure that you'll be taking this, your technicians, and putting it on YouTube for anyone to see. Um, now, will these particular lessons um, be uh, dubbed into any other languages, or are our different language speakers going to maybe uh, repeat some of these things? Uh, what's our plan for that? Thank you, Pastor Joseph. Really, um, uh, the reason of this marathon, or both marathons uh, about leadership and discipleship, really this came, or the birth was, uh, the vision was from the project of 1040 Window. And especially the 15, languages of the 1040 window, which means um, which means all Africa, all Middle East, and all Far East. So now we have some a team of 50 people, about 50, a little bit more than 50, but the target is to complete 75 leaders. And that's why we call um, this marathon, which start on April 19th, Okay, not the coming Monday, the Monday after, we call it is that developing leaders to disciple others. So really, the plan is this is like uh, a good classes, good resources to be to these 50 people or 75 people. Okay, that's only our people or our team, but there are hundreds or probably thousands of uh, teams coming from other ministries, they will be blessed and they will be benefited. So these uh, 50, let's say 50 leaders, that th these are the leaders in those nations, they basically, they will, th this will be trained so that they will train other disciples, okay? Right. And that's where to fourth generation. Now, you did mention about how it's going to work. Well, yes, number one, it's going to be all ABN platforms, not only the both satellites of Middle East and Far East, but also all other channels, including the Far East channels or the Middle East channels like Urdu, Turkish, Afghani, um, Arabic, Kurdish, etc. Um, so that's number one. Uh, finally, is obviously it's going to be uh, it, it will be sent to all these uh, leaders as links from whether YouTube or Facebook, and there are by the way uh, millions, maybe tens of millions of Middle East and Far East. They understand English very well. Okay, so uh, English language is uh, is very very spoken everywhere. So thank God that uh, we do have millions of Middle Eastern or African or Far East, they speak their language. Uh, dubbing into other languages, I am not quite sure about that, but definitely we will upload it to social media. And also it will be played in every playlist of these languages, okay? It's gonna be through, through let's say uh, every month it's gonna be played uh, one of one or two of these shows uh, in that uh, uh, playlist. So, but mainly is we 
launch this marathon, two marathons, or we will launch uh, the first one in April, basically to train, develop, and equip our small team of 50 leaders from Middle East, Africa, and Far East. Praise God. Well, it sounds like a wonderful plan, and uh, I, I'm excited about it. And Dr. Uh, Bill, um, yes, we thank God for you and, and putting together this this team. And uh, what uh, for our viewers again? We we had the uh, we we had the uh, schedule up, but um, if we want to encourage people to watch, someone who's watching right now, just say an average viewer. Um, maybe they're not a church leader, uh, but what can they receive out of this? Well, would you say the lay person is a good reason for them to be tuning in and letting others know to tune in, or maybe for them to tell their pastors or church leaders to tune in? Well, you know, the uh, one of the things that I, I really wanted to do when we put together this team was to get a team of practitioners, not mm -hmm. just theorists. We wanted yeah. people who practically worked it out on a day-by-day -day basis. And we really have tried to do that. Now, I, I think that many people who may not, they might not be in a church, or they may not be a leader in a church per se, but they, they want to know more about leadership. They will certainly profit by it. Uh, there will be others out there that who are leading large organizations. There are many, the principles of leadership they're going to be talking about cross the boundaries. So it's not just leadership in a church, but it might be leadership in an organization or in a business that they could also profit. And certainly uh, that, you know, you, if you, as you look at the group of guys that we pulled together, uh, they are they are pastors of churches. Some of them are mega churches, uh, but they, they are practitioners of what they will be talking about. Amen. Wonderful. Uh, Dr. Dan, I had a question for you. I was just mm -hmm. wondering, um, you know, thinking about all of the different cultures that are represented in what we're trying to do, we understand, you know, that there are some things that are cultural, especially with, with the idea of leadership and, and servants. But, uh, I, you know, I, I imagine the more biblical, of course, uh, what the, th the theme that's being shared, the more that it will transcend cultures. And um, have you thought about how that might play out in, in your teaching? Uh, yes. The, uh, I always, when I'm talking to pastors and leaders, because as I mentioned, I've served in, and worked and taught leaders in several African countries, and mm. so which are very different than those in the U.S. Right. But if we would stay close to looking not only at the words of Jesus, but the ways of Jesus, if we look at those things, it transcends culture. And so like yeah. when we talk about the heart of the leader where it says connecting to God and Jesus says, uh, apart from me, you can do nothing. That's in every culture or that we have to have community or when Jesus says, as the father has sent me, I am sending you. That's true in every single culture. And so Amen. if we talk about the life of Jesus and look at the way he made disciples and look at the way uh, of what he showed us, how he did it, then we can be, doesn't matter the culture because mm. it's going to, because Jesus, when he came and released scripture, uh, he, he wanted to reach the whole world. That's what it said for God. So loved the world. Mm. And so what he gave us in scripture was a worldwide plan and then we can adapt it to cultural things, but we start with the worldwide plan, which is mm. the words and ways of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we're almost we're almost out of time, but before we uh, end, uh, and I want uh, Doctor Bill to close us with prayer, if he would, in just a few moments. But before we do that, uh, Doctor Bossom, as we're running out of time, uh, is there anything else you'd like to share with our viewers? Just before yes. we end tonight. Yes, I uh, two things. Uh, num two points. Number right. one, I want you to. Uh, I'm speaking to the viewers. I want you to encourage you and to um, put it in your calendar. This important marathon. 
This is the first time ABN and Trinity Channel we are doing such important, especially, it's actually not only leadership and discipleship, but also talking about missions and about church planting. So mm. every pastor, every Christian, he needs to learn something about these four big themes. And that's why we, we have two marathons on these four categories, leadership, discipleship, missions, and church planting. So make sure that to watch these 10 good shows, each show about uh, there will be four good academic uh, people like Pastor Bill and uh, Dr. Dan. But also um, next week, we will have, or oh, not me, I'm not going to be here, but brother Pastor Dan, sorry, Pastor Bill, he will have another three different speakers. Like uh, Dr. Dan is one of the speakers. Dr. Bill is another speaker. Uh, but next Friday, we will have another show like this. It's pre-marathon. And there will be another four people, four great speakers. They will talk in details. Thank you. This is the advertisement. They will be talking about what we are going to do on from Monday to Friday, April 19 to 23rd, in those five evenings. And this will be broadcast to both satellites as well as all other platforms of uh, digital uh, platforms. Uh, we are excited and God is going to do great things. And then the blessings is this will be we going up to websites, social media, YouTube, and uh, we're going to keep continue broadcasting them through all our channels um, to Africa, to Middle East, and to Far East. I'm excited, really. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And by the way, uh, we thank God for you, Dr. Bassam, because we know over the last few years, several years, You've uh, had lots of different issues with your health uh, that have debilitated you, uh, but God has seen fit to give you a, a good degree of healing and not only healing, but strength and stamina uh, to continue with your uh, broad uh, seeing vision uh, and, and to go at a, a faster pace than ever before. So may God continue to give you good health, spirit, soul, and body as Thank you lead you. this charge of this ministry throughout to the really the other ends of the earth. Dr. Dan, look forward to uh, your teaching. I'll certainly be tuning in so that uh, after what you've said, uh, there's some things that I need to learn. Uh, <laughs> and I think I can learn at your feet. And uh, Dr. Bill, thank you again uh, for all of your work. And now, of course, this is such a, a huge undertaking. And in the providence of God, all of these individuals uh, accepting your invitation, uh, bringing them together for such a time as this, it certainly is is something that we need to pray for. So could you pray? Oh, yes, uh, Dr. Basson? Yes, I just want to uh, also to repeat that again. If Janelle could present the, the eight marathons, I want to mention about the second marathon, not only the upright, no, the, the marathons, yes. If you look to the, under the first column from the left, the second one, it's in November 3rd, from 1st to 5th. That's going to be the second Christian Apologetics Leadership and Discipleship Marathon. But before that, we have April 19th to 23rd, the first marathon. The, there We have 20 great speakers and directors and pastors and leaders of the churches like uh, Dr. Dan and Dr. Bill Hustler. Uh, I encourage you to tune to the April one as well as we will remind you later on about the November one. Thank you, Pastor Joseph. Thank you, Dr. Bassam. And Dr. Bill, uh, certainly all of this uh, merits our prayers. So uh, would you pray for this endeavor and for our viewers this evening? And uh, Pastor Joseph, as I uh, do that just before I do that. I know that there could well be somebody who somewhere in the world uh, has tuned in and is listening. Maybe they just got to this channel. Or they got to this location by chance. They just happened to be flipping through the channels or looking and 
you don't know Christ and you're discouraged and you, you don't have hope. We're talking about followers of Jesus. And, and you, I just want you to know that God loves you. He loves you so much that he sent Jesus to the cross for you. He loves the whole world for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him, who receives him and the gift that he offers to you, you say, but I can't earn it. I, I, I don't deserve. No, none of us do. I don't deserve it. None of us deserve salvation. But that's the amazing thing. God gives it to us through Jesus Christ if we'll simply receive the gift. And when I'm praying, I'm going to ask you to pray in your heart. Invite Jesus into your life. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and to become your savior. And then if you pray that prayer, I would love for you to get in touch with ABN and let them help you find some resources to help you grow in your faith. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for tonight, and we thank you for the opportunity to train leaders around the world. Now, dear Lord, I may be talking to somebody who just happened to find this, this program. They're tuned into it, and they are listening and they have a hunger after God. Dear Lord, would you help them to find that rest, that peace in Jesus? Lord, would you help them to invite him right now? Just say, dear Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. I don't understand it. I don't know how it happened, but I ask you to come in and forgive me for I'm sorry for my sins. And I receive you as my savior right now in Jesus name. Amen. 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 And if you prayed that prayer, the Holy Spirit said, and it says that he comes to live within you. I trust that you'll get a hold of ABN or find some good Bible preaching church near where you are. Maybe you're in a country that doesn't allow that. But um, if you'll seek a time of getting alone with God, I know he will lead you. God bless you. God bless you too. Praise Thank the you. Lord. Thank you, dear brothers. Thank you, dear viewers, and continue to pray for ABN and tell others to tune in uh, April 19th uh, for this uh, wonderful discipleship marathon. We're excited and we thank God for each and every one of you. Until next time, we say to you, good night and God bless. God bless.